May we all transition through life with beauty and grace, like a butter butterfly. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Like a Butterfly. I'm your host, Angelica Ross, and today's episode is called Living in Glass Jars. And for me, that brings up the conversation around privilege and what that means when it comes to transition. Who has the privilege to transition? And, you know, and has the privilege of being in certain environments to transition. And which environments kind of look like privilege, but they may not necessarily be that privileged environments, but they're kind of privileged. They're privileged, more privileged than some, but they still have their sort of catch-22s. So I'm going to talk about sort of a 360 view around that glass jar. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Like a Butterfly it's a new episode. It's a new day. We're trying new things. I got a new intro sort of slash theme song. I uh, hope you like it. Those of you that, um, you know, have been long term fans, you know, um, know that I'm going to sing a song right and throw a little something, something down. So that intro music you heard was actually a snippet of a song that I wrote a while back called Be Strong. I play a little guitar, recorded the vocals in my bedroom, you know, back in the day. A girl was on her hustle, you know. So I'm just, I'm using it for the show now. We just, you know, I got, I'm going to use my own music, you know, until further notice. You know, that's how we do. And I want to introduce a new segment to Like a Butterfly that I'm calling The Spread. And basically, The Spread is basically just a segment where I put a little wind beneath the wings of stories that I feel like deserve a little bit more airtime. Stuff that people aren't talking about, which usually are stories that deal with trans people and people of color. You know, I'm just going to be real. Um, so to start off, I want to start off with this story that you may heard about, um, uh, about this black trans woman who basically was beat up mob style in Dallas, Texas. According to the New York Times, Edward Thomas, a 29 year old black man, was offered $200 to beat up this trans woman in what the mayor of Dallas called an attack of mob violence, according to court records released last Monday. Now, this altercation started uh, allegedly from this trans woman backing up accidentally into this man's car into in a parking lot that was of this apartment complex. Um, and so then basically uh, an altercation started and there's a video out there and someone has sent this video to me on my um, social media. And when I first saw it, uh, my heart just just dropped. Uh, and I, you know, I immediately started tearing up and I was just like, I can't do this. I can't handle this. Like another, yet another situation where a black trans woman is facing violence. And I believe you say her name is Malaysia Booker. She's only 22 years old, a 22 year old black trans woman minding her business, driving her car, and, okay, we all make mistakes. You understand what I'm saying? We all make mistakes, and I, I get it when somebody bump, backs up into your nice ride. But is it really worth stumping a bitch down, basically? And apparently, you know, there's a voice heard on the tape that was like, you know, shoot her. And apparently somebody had a gun. Uh, you know, it's just what's allegedly what some of the reports are, are coming back. But at the very least... Someone is on tape offering this man $200 to whoop her ass, basically. And you can hear people, you know, chanting homophobic and transphobic slurs and calling her a man and, and just going off. And y'all wonder why. Y'all wonder why black, queer, LGBTQ folks got something to say and is on the next of our so-called heroes within the black community that don't seem to be um, raising their voices when it comes to the violence that black trans people experience and that black gay people experience, like the black men who have been murdered or in, wound up dead, let's say, in Ed Buck's home in California, yet he's still roaming free. 
two black bodies. But we don't seem to care about these bodies when they're gay, when they're lesbian, and when they're trans. And that's messed up, y'all. We got, we got to, we got to, we got, we really got to look at this phrase, Black Lives Matter. Because I believe Patrice and Alicia Garza and, and the folks that, that founded that, I believe that they meant that to mean all of us. All the, especially the black lives that we, we tend to forget about, that we tend to overlook. This black woman had the nerve, had the audacity to survive. And you see on this tape that luckily these cis black women, these cis women come in to save her and are basically cussing these dudes out and calling them out for the trash that they are. But God, it took quite a while for them to get in there. And I'm not saying, you know, whatever, but I'm like, wow, she was getting her ass beat for quite a while before somebody intervened. And luckily she's alive. Luckily, the the, the injuries that she sustained aren't too you know, life-threatening, that she can continue to speak up and use her voice as she has recently done in a rally. What's your problem? What is your problem? This is, please, these are the stories that I feel like need to be spread. I, 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 I used my judgment when it came to reposting the video because I really just did not want to... It was just graphic, and I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, that used, I used my judgment in, post, in not posting that video and not putting that onto my timeline and not, you know, but I do need to put this information out there, and I do need us to spread this information out there. All right. I want to move on to another story that I want to, um, you know, just bring up real quick in the spread, and basically it's... Uh, the, the news that came out about Illinois and, uh, you know, Medicaid uh, moving to cover gender reassignment surgery, which I think is incredible because right now at least 17 states and the District of Columbia also cover the surgeries as part of their Medicaid programs. Now, uh, J.B. Pritzker, who's in Chicago, uh, was quoted saying, health care is a right, not a privilege. And I'm committed to ensuring our LGBTQ community and all Illinoisians have access to that right, said Governor J.B. Pritzker in a news release. Expanding Medicaid to cover gender-affirming surgeries is cost-effective, helps avoid long-term health consequences, and most importantly, is the right thing to do. And I just want to say thank you, J.B. Pritzker, uh, for saying that. I completely agree with that, that it is the right thing to do. However, um, I think it is the right thing to do. I just also think that we need to look at this in a 360 view and and, and bring up this conversation around privilege, um, which... I, you know, I pre I can appreciate this is a is a move to sort of level the playing field and give more access to those who don't have the privilege to normally access these types of life affirming surgeries and life saving surgeries. However, as someone who has personally gone through the gender reassignment surgery, the the and and I have to say that. Um, more has to be done to think about the wraparound services that these trans people are going to need leading up to surgery as well as post-care surgery and in, in the healing time. Because I got to tell you, I had the privilege, luckily, now don't get me wrong, I haven't always had this privilege, let's not get it twisted, but I now have the privilege I had the privilege of traveling to Thailand, of choosing and researching the doctor and, you know, choosing the doctor of my choice and then taking off of work for at least three months so that I could heal. What black trans woman you know, what trans woman of color you know has the privilege to lay on her back for three months and not work and put up her feet and just focus on healing. And do you know what that leads to when they don't have access to 
that. I have had, I have ran into, I've ran into so many conversations with different people who've told me about different trans women, black trans women who have given up on the healing process, which includes dilation, which I have to tell you from experience is a son of a bitch. It's not easy. It's difficult. And it requires a lot of dedication and pushing yourself past pain and and sometimes spending hours at a time trying to reach that depth and maintain that depth that the doctor, the surgeon has created for you. And to be on top of it three times a day in the beginning, three times a day, at least for the first three months, at the very least. That's a lot. That's that's basic. That took up my whole life when I was uh, going through this process in the first three months. And it drove me into a bit of a depression. And I felt like I was on the verge, me, the person everybody thinks is so strong and can handle anything. Well, I'm going to tell you, this tested me for real. But I had the privilege to be in my apartment and to have my assistant come down, you know, after the after the several months, because I stayed in Thailand um, for 40 days to heal. And even that, even traveling after that was was difficult. And when I got back to the U.S., I struggled. And I had my assistant come down and, and stay with me for a week because I could barely walk to the kitchen. That took a lot of energy in between the pain medications. And I'm telling you, and I started thinking about the Medicaid offering this surgery to folks who can barely, who, who some are struggling with unemployment, with all kind of other stuff, with housing issues. So what are we doing to make sure that these folks don't drown and don't give up during their healing process? Because I'm going to tell you, it's difficult. And there's a lot of support that you need to get through it. At the very least... You need to be able to rest and to heal and to have that cocoon. I don't know. So, you know, spread the word that, you know, Medicaid is covering gender reassignment surgery and that girls will have access. But also, I think we need to spread the word that there's a lot of support that is needed, especially for those who have the least privilege amongst us. I believe that trans people are butterflies whose beautiful transitions are blessings to us all. And there are many ways to support these butterflies and not just admire how we slay and admire her beauty. So I want to take this opportunity to uplift another beautiful black Butterfly, a beautiful black trans woman by the name of Dane Figueroa Aditi. And she has a book out called For Black Trans Girls Who Gotta Cuss a Motherfucker Out When Snatching an Edge Ain't Enough. A Choreo Drama is a book of poetry that can also act as a script. She says, I believe art should be a mirror that centers, celebrates, challenges, and exposes. For Black Trans Girls is a celebration of trans women, goddesshood, a lament of, for our fallen, a sword for our living, and a challenge to white supremacy, structural oppression, and anyone who would dare to try to erase us from existence. Well, all right, Dane Figueroa Aditi, I am going to order me a couple copies. How about that? And I suggest all you out there listening right now, go out there to Lady Dane fe.com to get your book. I will include the link in the description, but if you go to lady, L-A-D-Y, Dane, D-A-N-E, F-E.com forward slash four black trans girls with a dash in between each of those um, words. I know it's a little complicated, but I'm still trying to give you the information here because I believe in using my platform as much as I can 
to uplift others who are out there doing the work and who are out there just living their damn lives and living them beautifully. Take notice of Dane Figueroa Aditi, who is also one of the co-stars in a web series that I'm executive producing called King Esther, which is being screened at the Martha Vineyard African American Film Festival this summer. So, and it also will be hitting the festival circuit all summer long. So stay tuned. We can't really talk about all the different dates, but I can tell you about that one. Martha's Vineyard, um, we're going to be doing King Esther. And if you want to know what King Esther is, well, visit www.kingesther.com. It's a beautiful story centering a black trans woman who's just, you know, trying to go after her dreams, living in New Orleans seven days before Hurricane Katrina. It's it's riveting, and I love it. I love everybody that's in it. It also stars Janet Hubert, who is, you know, as many of you know, the only, in my book, you know, the only Aunt Viv from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. You know. Um, but also, uh, you know, DeJay. Um, a black trans woman who is just, has been, you know, as as far as film and TV is concerned, is yet an unknown. But when you see her in this, you'll see that she's undeniable. And I really am grateful for the opportunity to use my spotlight and my platform to shine the light on other black trans talent. Um, so make sure you check out King Esther when it comes to your city. All right, so now I'm going to read a letter that I got from a listener named Regina. Regina says, I'm against self-labeling myself an ally to the trans community. Good job. Because it's not my place to do so, but I do take seriously my responsibility in uplifting trans women, especially black trans women, voices in my community and to the world. Recently, an ex of mine began dating a trans woman. Okay. And since he knows I vocally and actively support the LGBTQIA plus community, he felt comfortable sharing with me that his girlfriend is trans. And she says in parentheses, which probably wasn't his choice to make. That's also uh, good to understand because, you know, disclosure is not anybody's decision but the person disclosing. Um, She goes on to say, my question is this. After their breakup, which was tumultuous, he said a lot of transphobic things to her. And while she's incredible and will surely continue to be successful, I want to address his behavior and possibly in the friend, friendly acquaintanceship we have. That's a must. Uh, yes. And uh, he didn't tell me about his behavior toward her. She did. And I want to confront him with hopes he listens, apologizes to her, and understands that violence against trans women is real. Okay, sorry for the super long message for the situation. What's the best way for me, a cisgender black woman, knowing the statistics for my trans sisters, the best way to proceed? Okay, so I think I, I, think I hear a couple things in this question. I think that one, you are aware that, you know, obviously... Number one, the breakup was tumultuous. And so you don't want to necessarily throw any more fire onto the situation and increase the situation's probability to be violent towards a trans woman. And I hear all of your sensitivity towards that in your message. So I I definitely appreciate that. Um, The other thing I would definitely say is I would definitely talk to your friend, your trans friend, and let them know how you feel about the situation since they've told you that and that, look, you know what? I really can't be friends with somebody who behaved in that way. Uh, And I'm sorry, the next time I see this person, I'm going to have to let them know that. Is that okay with you? You know, um, I don't have to let them know the D in detail what you told me, but um, at the very least, I can let them know that I think that it's messed up and that I think that, they should apologize. And, you know, depending on what they just decide to do from there, like if that, if that man takes this, you know, situation is like, you know, prostrates himself. Okay. In front of y'all. And is like, you know what? I was a complete asshole and I, you know, I deserve, 
I deserve whatever, you know, to be talked about, to be called trash or whatever the case is, because that was some trash behavior. And I'm sorry. And, you know, it's a different thing if somebody has a come to Jesus moment. You know, and if you want to salvage that friendship and, you know, you I don't know what, I don't even know, if, you know, what the girl code is for staying friends with somebody that, you know, really dogged your friend out. I probably would be like, mm, it's a wrap. I, you know, I don't really have that many friends. No way. I'm selective as it is. I'm only holding two photos in this pile. Um, if I do not call your name, please grab your things and pack your ass up out of my life. You know, it's per probably how I would pretty much handle it. Um, so that would be my answer. I mean, like, you know, uh, when you are having friends, you know, it, it, this term friends these days is used so loosely, especially on Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I mean, when you using that word friends or you, you even use that word acquaintanceship. So I'm going to give you that. You said acquaintanceship. So just, I would be really clear about what that acquaintanceship is all about and if it's really that necessary for somebody that's behaving and believes in that way. Unless, like I said, they are showing a complete change of heart because I believe people change and I believe in giving people the room to change. I have several people in my life who have trashed me. You've never heard about it, but they've trashed me and I've given them the space and the grace to grow. Now, they may not have the same position in my life. I may not talk to them on a daily basis like we used to or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But I've definitely given them the space and I've forgiven and move on and, you know, what whatnot. So, you know, it's, it's up to you ultimately, but that I, I appreciate you standing up. And I do think you should say something because that is messed up. Um, and I think it needs to come from you. Um, as a black cis, you know, again, ally. And I know we use that word lightly, and, and I, I agree. It should be out. It's, it's not no badge of honor. It's just what you should be doing as a human being, standing up for each other. Like, is that so difficult to understand, people? It shouldn't really be that difficult to understand. But thank you for your question, though. So, you know, the basic takeaway from that letter, though, Regina, is whenever you have a question about what to do as an ally, especially for a particular person, if they're a friend, someone you care about and know, the first thing is to open up dialogue with them and see how they feel about it and see how they feel about you wanting to stand up and say something. And maybe they might tell you, you know what, you know, I feel uncomfortable with you saying something because I think it might make things awkward. Then there goes, there's your answer. But it might be a situation where they're like, you know what, I'm tired of always speaking up. So, yeah, it would be nice once in a while to have someone else have my back and to say something. But I would start by asking the person, what does support look like to you in this moment from me? So one of the chapters in my book, Like a Butterfly, is going to be called Living in Glass Jars. And the reason why I chose that title is because for a significant portion of my life as a black trans woman, I was living in a glass jar. I was in a relationship. Um, I had a fiance. Um, and I was in this relationship that was on and off and that was tumultuous. But I was in this relationship over a course of almost eight years of my life. And so as some of my friends sort of pointed out back in the day, you know, um, at least I learned a lot of the lessons that I learned through one flawed man instead of many. And I definitely count my blessing there for sure. Um, but, you know, there, there were privileges in sort of living with this white man whose white privilege sort of acted like a blanket over myself. Um, 
but it was one of those blankets, you know, that you're like you're in bed and you're trying to share a blanket, but it, you're getting some of it, but it just don't quite cover you. That's kind of how his white privilege was, you know, it's, uh, it covered us at times and in moments. But, you know, you can't cover up, nor would I want to cover up this beautiful black skin. But often I did not have to disclose that I was trans in that relationship. And so we lived in Boca Raton, Florida, and lived in a gated community that became my glass jar. Um, And so I own and admit to the privileges that I've experienced that have made my transition what it is. But with it has come its own challenges as well. I go into more detail about those challenges, those pros and cons of living in that glass jar with him. As well as, you know, what life was like when I finally got out of that jar and finally started to fly on my own. And how that too was a beautiful but dangerous journey. Um, Yeah, so, you know, stay tuned to this podcast as well as to, you know, more information about the book. I have completed the book proposal, you know, my agents have it and, you know, are doing whatever they are doing with it. And, you know, so um, well, hopefully the book will be um, coming out soon and we'll have information on that soon. But in the meantime, we will have this podcast that, you know, I will sort of sort of share the chapters, an overview of the chapters, sort of the theme of the chapters in each of these episodes and kind of talk about those themes and open those themes up to the listeners and to your questions and to how these sort of themes show up in your lives and affect you and your transition. You might not even be trans, you know, but you might be going through a traumatic or dramatic transition in your life right now. And you may relate to some of the things in this podcast. Um, So stay tuned. And be strong out there, y'all. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.